Hey guys, Jake here from uh, Cowboy for Game here with a deck profile for you. This is a deck that I've mentioned on the podcast uh, for a couple of weeks now. I'm really happy with it. Uh, this is uh, Horus Orcust Bistil, or Bistil Hawkist as I like to call it. Um, so it's doing fairly well at locals, but obviously if there's anything you can see that I'm missing or any suggestions you have, feel free to comment down below and let me know. Uh, otherwise, let's get into it. So we start with obviously the main cards, which is, let's actually put them in frame, that's a decent idea, uh, three of uh, Gearsu. Um, crazy Carlin was announced four years ago and then we lost our boy Harp, uh, so he became a little less crazy, uh, but I love him just the same. Uh, so Foolish is an Orcus or World Legacy card uh, on summon, uh, has a neat little trick that if there's two cards in his column other than himself he also becomes a tuner, which sometimes comes up, uh, and then he can generate two tokens, one to either field as well, uh, blocks, evenly matched blocks, imperm and stuff like that. Uh, then we have uh, one Harp, two Nightmare, two Symbol, and one Wand. Um, I found this is the best ratio. You would really don't want to be running too many of uh, the Nightmares because they just clog up your hand. Um, and yeah, like one Wand, I was tempted to play two, but I just don't think it'll, like again, similar with Nightmare, it'll just brick up your hand. And then you need to play a couple of Symbol because sometimes you do get a little bit stuck um, for cards, so it's good to have a couple of him running around. Uh, but yeah, our boy's back. Our boy's back. Uh, then we move on to the secondary engine, which is the, uh, what they're called again? Horus, the Horus stuff. Uh, so we have three in city, uh, so pitches himself and another card to search the, uh, main spell, the sarcophagus, and then draws an extra card. Uh, and then summons back if a card leaves the field while he's on the board He then gets to non-target send something as well. So he's like a sort of main deck ding uh, Crazy card uh, also dark is important for another engine, which I'll bring up in a second uh, and then we're playing also the uh, I don't really want to pronounce their names, but we're playing these two happy and this guy They're really hard to pronounce. I should work out how we are actually supposed to say them, but here we are uh, then we have uh, a relatively new part of the deck that I've added, which is three Vision Resonator. Um, I keep putting them out of frame, I do apologize. Um, so, uh, if you have a level five or higher dark monster, uh, like this guy on the board, uh, special summons itself from the hand, uh, and then if you sent from the field to the graveyard, he adds a spell that mentions Red Dragon Archfiend from your deck as well. Uh, so really easy sync 10 options, as well as just extending if you get a little bit stuck for monsters and you need stuff for link summoning. Uh, and then for uh, some more monsters, we've got two Bestial Rebellion. Um, currently I'm running two. I find that's probably enough. Sorry, I keep putting them out of frame. Uh, so yeah, I found this is enough for the moment. Um, I do have to give one of these back to someone in a little bit. So uh, we will be uh, indirectly testing it with one for a little while. Um, just because I'm running a fairly small bestial package in general, um, just because it's really not the format for darks and lights at the moment. So if it becomes a, a dark and light sort of chaos format again, it probably might be worth running more bestials in general as well as more rebellions to be able to search. But at the moment, this seems to be working. And then we're also playing Druus Worm and Magnemut. Um, I couldn't find any Sarony, so I've been playing without it. Um, Sarony is really just the dump to get the extra spell, but because Lebellion is such a negation target to stop you from getting to those cards, it really hasn't been too much of a problem, to be honest. Um, and then, yeah, him being able to search out your Jewish Worm and then just sort of recursion of those is really good. Uh, and then we've got the other normals, which are Armageddon and Dark Refa. I really don't like Dark Refa, particularly in this build, because you are pitching so many resources with your King Sark. You just don't have the additional cards to be able to get his effect off effectively, unless you happen to open badly. And even then, you've probably got other problems. So um, if there were another card I could play instead of him, I probably would, or I'd just cut him all together. But it does come up, so it's handy to have. But more often than not, I end up siding him out. Uh, and then to round out the monsters, just three Ash. 
Uh, this I have contemplated uh, switching out for possibly Droll, uh, just because Droll is huge in the current format and giving your opponents Fires Engraved to be able to give Heater access to then go into Promethean, all that kind of stuff seems like a not great idea. So that may go into the side in lieu of the Drolls, but we'll see how things progress from here. Uh, moving on to some spells. Uh, so the spell I'm searching with my Vision Resonator is this, the Crimson Guy. Uh, so once per turn you can add a, uh, what is it? Strictly add. Uh, a card that mentions Red Dragon Archfiend from your deck or graveyard to hand so you can recycle your visions uh, really easily or just add more from your deck. Um, the rest of the effects really only apply uh, with the Red Dragon Archfiend, which I'm not playing, so it's really not that important. Uh, but Vision searches these, and these search Vision. So, yeah, really good. Uh, then we've got two King Sarks. Uh, haven't felt the need to play a third. I don't think it's going to be that important. Realistically, the two should be fine. Um, so, yeah, if you're not familiar, uh, up to four times per turn, discard or send a card from your hand uh, to then send a... a Horus monster from your deck, uh, and then while it's on the board, your Horuses can't be destroyed by effects that don't target them, um, which is great for your board wipes, but again, more often than not, we're using it for material for other summons, so it's not really going to be sitting on the board all that long. Uh, and then we've got three triple tactics. Uh, there is a lot of monster effects going off in the format right now, so this is really good to replenish your hand, because as I said, you do lose a lot of um, resources to get stuff into the bin for the deck, so being able to add some stuff back to your hand to keep in play is really good and just being able to um, rip your opponent's hand uh, particularly if they draw you because this deck really doesn't add a great deal outside of um, sort of Imseti and stuff so being able to take a card out of your opponent's hand and get a read on what they're playing uh, to sort of work out what you're best playing is really good uh, and then we've got some one ofs we've got Rota, we've got Call By We've got Orchestrated Return and Orchestrated Babble, Foolish Burial, and Branded Regained. Um, I mean, the Foolish and Rhoda, as well as maybe these two, are kind of um, inset. If you're not going to run the Branded Package, you probably wouldn't run that. Um, and yeah, Foolish is bonkers, but yeah, I guess if you don't feel like you're going to see this particular one of you could run other stuff as well uh, i contemplated running metal foes fusion just because it's a free discard for your king sark and then you can put it back and draw something but if you sit there with it in hand with no discard engine it feels kind of bad so yeah that seems to be working for me quite well at the moment and then lastly for the main deck uh, we've got three imperms uh, non-monster targeting disruption but again that might change with incoming cards uh, and then the orchestrated August crescendo, I should say. Uh, yeah, so that's the main deck. Uh, and then for the extra, probably won't be too many surprises here, but we have two Galatea, one Long Yisu, and two Ding Yisu. Um, oh, just quickly, uh, big shouts out. She shout outs to Jesse uh, for this ulti. Uh, gave it to me for my birthday last year. Very big thank. Um, but yeah. Obviously these are your big plays, recycling machines to then set your orca spells and traps, uh, recycle up to two machines to then send a card, and then this is uh, both your recursion attaching stuff from your banished and your off turn plays of being able to send stuff non-targeting, uh, very good. Uh, this is uh, basically just to get the token that you generate with Gisu off the board, doesn't serve any purpose other than that. Uh, in theory, if you are a little bit stuck, it can be your material into SP if uh, things are going great for you. Um, but realistically, what you want to be doing is setting up your IP into SP play off turn. Uh, SP are quite good in this deck, I feel. Um, just being able to sort of, even if like obviously the, the normal stuff, but then almost the, um, I guess you could call it the Jesse, uh, no, Joshua Schmidt play of banishing stuff to then put it back on your board uh, for the next turn. Um, if you happen to have your SP die, which quite often happens, uh, you've got Nightmare Unicorn if you need it, uh, and access code for your game finishes. Um, the only bad aspect I guess you could attribute for access code is that because of the sort of cards that I'm currently running, I only ever have Dark Links in my graveyard, so it's only ever going to get one pop. Um, 
but in saying that, the the Dark Lock of Orc Orcist is a big consideration, so there's not a lot of other stuff you could summon. Um, but yeah, more often than not, access code will give you game regardless, so it should be fine. Uh, then we move on to some Xyz. Uh, we've got uh, number 90, Galaxy Ice Photon Lord, and the Zombie Vampire. Uh, this is a negate if you sort of have your um, resources set up. If you are a bit stuck for resources, uh, Zombie Vampire comes into play. Um, yeah. And then, if all else fails, Zeus as well, if you need it, um, yeah. And then lastly, our, our level 10 synchros, we have obviously Baron de Fleur, Cart's crazy, uh, can't really, like there's really no other replacement for Baron um, other than maybe Dispater, but if you're not playing the bestial package, you can't really summon it, so uh, yeah. Even if you don't need the uh, bestial portion, you could just run two Baron, to be honest. Card's good. Cool. All right. Thank you all very much for listening and watching. Um, as I said, feel free to jump in the comments if there's any suggestions you have, both for this deck and for any other decks you'd like us to profile. Um, catch us next time, and yeah, we'll see you all then.